hello hello everyone welcome back to my channel my name is Sydney Morgan the case that I have for you today is about a young teenage love that turned deadly and and that deadly was set on fire but before we get started I would like to tell you that if you like my content make sure you give it a thumbs up you hit the subscribe button so you can come back and you can chit chat with me a little bit more on to today's case today's case we're gonna be talking about the Caffey family the Caffey family they lived in Emory Texas there was a mother named Penny she was a stay-at-home mom to her three children. Her oldest was a teenager. It was a girl. Her name was Erin. Then she had two younger sons, Matthew and Tyler. She homeschooled the boys. She played the piano in the choir for their church. They were a very religious family. The father, Terry, he worked and he was also the youth pastor for their local church. Now when the daughter Erin was 15 years old she started dating a kid who was a little bit older and his name was Charlie Wilkinson. The, the parents Penny and uh, Terry they fucking hated this kid. They did not like him. They didn't like him because in, within the first meeting Terry came home and he found his daughter Erin and her new boyfriend Charlie just lounging in the living room but when Terry walked in he found that the new boyfriend Charlie he had his feet up on the coffee table he was in Terry's recliner and when Terry walked in put his hand out to Charlie to to shake his hand and Charlie said yeah my name's Charlie who are you and Terry was really taken back by this he had no clue like what the hell is going on who are you and he just immediately didn't like him he didn't like him because there was just too many sketchy things about this kid he immediately felt uneasy and he said that he thought that there was an evil in this kid he was just that kind of boy that you really do not want your teenage daughter dating well, the parents expressed to Aaron they said hey we don't want you dating this little shithead uh, we don't like him he's not a good influence he's disrespectful so we want you to break it off now Aaron was pretty upset at first so she kind of thought about it for a little while and then she told her parents that she was gonna break it off with him but was she really in February of 2008 Aaron told her parents Penny and Terry that she broke up with her boyfriend Charlie and she kind of did that just to ease them on the fact of like get get pretend to get Charlie out of the picture but three days later on March 1st of 2008 Charlie went and he picked up two of his friends and once they all got in the car they decided to drive over to Aaron's place not really sure what they claim their intentions were but they showed up to Aaron's house and they said that their dog just kept barking so they drove away but about an hour later Charlie and his two friends went back to Aaron's house and Charlie and his friend Charles went to the front door of Aaron's home once they got inside of the home they shot Terry and they also shot Penny Aaron's mother they tried to shoot Penny one more time the gun jammed so they grabbed a sword and started chopping away at Penny until she was almost decapitated. The two younger boys that lived in the home heard the commotion downstairs, so they came down the stairs. The friend, Charles, shot Matthew, and then Charlie went and found Tyler hiding in a closet, so he stabbed him to death. And the father, Terry, he was shot but he didn't know what was going on he was kind of in and out of consciousness and he kind of witnessed most of this going on then Charlie and Charles poured lighter fluid all over the house they set the house on fire and they got back in the car and they left and once Terry the father gained his consciousness back just a little bit he looked over he saw his wife Penny laying there and he knew immediately that she was dead because she was almost decapitated so he moved on to find the other two boys he found both of the boys dead and he somehow managed to stumble out of the home 
onto the front lawn and he made it to the neighbor's house to where he could call police. Once the police arrived at the neighbor's home and found Terry, he was shot in multiple places. He then proceeded to tell the police officers who had done this. He said, it's Charlie Wilkinson, it's my daughter Aaron's boyfriend. And then they realized that, uh, where's Aaron? Where's the daughter? Where, where the hell is she? So now that they know that it was Charlie, the police went to Charlie's trailer. They arrested Charlie and his friends and they found Aaron hiding. I think it was in a closet. She claims that she was kidnapped and she, she, while the whole scene at her home was going on, that she woke up and she saw the smoke and she got out. She then claims that she was taken to the trailer and she was pretty much being held hostage. She says that she was drugged and she couldn't really remember anything of what happened. But the police were looking at Aaron like, wait a minute, so you're claiming that you woke up in this home that was engulfed in flames and then were immediately taken to Charlie's trailer and held captive, but she didn't smell at all like smoke. If you were in a burning house, you would smell like smoke. Like, I know that I go outside when we're having a fire. For two minutes, I come back in, and I smell like that fire. So it really just wasn't making any sense. The police knew that nothing was adding up, and they were ready to get to the bottom of it. And in interrogation, Charlie dropped the bombshell. He said that this was all Aaron's plan, and that she was the mastermind behind all of it. That she wanted the boys to come in and murder her parents and her brothers so that they could be together, so that they could get married and live some happy life, and just claim that they're her parents died in some tragic accident. And while the police were interrogating Charlie, his friend Charles, and Charles's girlfriend Bobby was also there and present, she claims that she waited in the car while the boys went in and did the deed. Everybody cracked. Everybody had the same exact story saying that it was Aaron who had set this up. It was Aaron who, who wanted her whole family murdered. So the police decided that they were going to dig into the phone records of Aaron and all the kids that were the teenagers that were in the car at the time. So police records show that around the time that Charlie and his friends showed up in the car an hour before the murders at Aaron's house that Aaron was talking to Charlie on the phone back and forth. Charlie was telling Aaron that the dog was being a problem. The dog barking when they initially showed up was this big issue. They didn't like it. They felt uncomfortable. So the other kids were claiming that when they called and were talking to Aaron about the dog barking that Aaron said on the phone while she was in the house, I'll take care of this. I'll take care of the dog. We don't have to worry about it. So Aaron came out of the house, got into Charlie's car. And when they left for an hour, Aaron went with them. They went to a different area and they just, they started discussing what they should do, what the new plan was. And all of the three teenagers that were in the car claimed that while the murders were being taken place in the house, Aaron was in the car with Charles' girlfriend Bobby at the time, waiting for them to come back out so that they could make their getaway. When Charlie and Charles got back into the car, they claim that Aaron, all of them claim that Aaron said, holy shit, that was awesome. Terry would actually survive all of his gunshot wounds. He survived, and when he came to, he was pissed. When the investigators told him that Aaron was involved, that Aaron set all of this up. So immediately he was like, I want the death penalty for all those little shits that did this to us. But later he would have a change of heart. So as all of these teens are going to court for the murders of the entire family before Terry had his change of heart, he claims that he brought his gun into court and he started shaking like he was going to take care of these kids. He was pissed. That's when he had his change of heart. He he thought about it and he was like, man, if I kill these kids, that's not going to bring back my wife and my two sons. 
And during the testimonies, one of Aaron's exes came forward to say that Aaron had actually asked him to kill her parents before all of this went down. So all of these teenagers were being charged with three counts of capital murder. Jury came back from deliberations and Charlie and Charles were found guilty for the three capital murders. They were sentenced to life without the possibility of parole. Now when Aaron was sentenced, Aaron was sentenced to life with the possibility of parole after 40 years. And with Terry's change of heart, he stepped forward and asked them not to give the death penalty to any of them. To this day, Terry and his daughter Aaron still talk. He has forgiven all of them. He He's moved on. He has now a new wife with four children. He still loves Aaron and he talks to her regularly, which is, I don't know how I would feel in that situation. Like that's your child. So you definitely have some kind of love for that child. But at the same time, like they killed your wife and kids, but Terry, Terry forgives them. He claims that it just, it something happened that was bad and he took it and turned it into a positive. He now goes on from um, doing different testimonies at churches, telling his story so that people can learn to forgive and I wouldn't do it. Fuck that. But they still talk, they still love each other and he's moved on. He's, he's happy now and he's living a good life while all the other people rot in prison like they should. Thank you guys so much for joining me for this video today. As I said before, make sure you give this video a thumbs up. You subscribe so you can come back and chit chat with me on more stories about murder and crazy shit.